Hello boys and girl, today I'm going to be talking about my Wicker Man, Summon Raging Spirits, Necromancer. I want to give you a little bit of a backstory to this character because I did end up getting to level 100 on this one and actually being first on the ladder for the first time ever. Many people have been asking questions about it, this build, so here we go. Initially this character is set out to be just a standard SRSer. I have played a lot of SRS in the past so I wasn't particularly looking forward to it. However, I didn't really have an idea what other build I could play at the start of 3.0. I landed on this, I was hoping that eventually I will find maybe the golem jewels and those will allow me to have a little bit of a different playstyle to your usual plus 3 bow, plus 3 staff SRSer by mainly focusing on dealing damage to those golems. However, obviously I've never found the jewels and instead we landed on the new addition to the 3.0 release which is Wicker Men. Wicker Men are essentially what Burning Miscreations used to be. However, they deal a lot more AoE damage. They have a lot larger AoE in general. They use Molten Strike which gets them a lot of single target damage. And overall, they're also insanely tanky. So, as you can see by the gameplay, the focus of the build is to deal about 90% of the damage through the Wicker Man, and then the SRS really only cleans up the rest of it. So, if you're interested in the fast-paced, Spectre-focused summoner, this just might be the build for you. The playstyle of this character is incredibly aggressive. One of the reasons why I rolled an SRSer was because you can stay in the back, just casually kill mobs, everything kind of folds over eventually, the SRS off screen. But that's not the case with this one. It is a super active character. You have to constantly keep everything up. And if that's what you're looking for, this is probably something you're going to have a lot of fun with. I wanted to have something simple to play to 100, this definitely was not something simple to play to 100, but nonetheless it is a very different approach and therefore quite fun. What we mostly do is we shield charge around teleporting our wicker man alongside us onto packs of mobs and the wicker man should clean up just about anything pretty much instantly. Every now and then you're gonna have one or two mobs left behind and that's where your SRS come in which will kill them pretty much initially immediately from either the last pack that they've killed or you're gonna have to cast a new one and they will kill that. For bosses make sure to put your decoy and stone golem to good use. All you really have to do is tank it with the wicker man and the taunt options that you've got and just cast a bunch of SRS. Most bosses die really fast. It's not the best single target in the game but it's pretty safe and it deals with most map mods very well. Without further ado, we can get right into the setup of the character. Like I mentioned before, it primarily focuses on Wicker Man, however, we still need to be able to cast our Summon Raging Spirits. Because we are not in any way capable of doing that with the skill tree that we currently have, we don't use a plus 3 staff, so we can't get blood magic, we instead use a Covenant chess piece. This chess piece has level 15 out of chaos damage which helps out a little bit and it also has blood magic on it. What this also allows us to do is use the scourge claw for the 70% minion damage if you have hit recently and also a little bit more attack speed for our minions and with the attack speed on the base weapon we can shield charge around at a pretty fast pace paired up with the flesh offering. We have two ways of triggering our scourge claw proc this is either through shield charging, hence the use of Resolute Technique on the build. Many have asked in the past, but no Resolute Technique does not apply in your minion to your minions in any way. This is strictly so that we can grant ourselves Fortify very consistently since it is a very aggressive playstyle. And also because we want those procs to be quite consistent. We also use Ball Lightning with EE, Elemental Equilibrium. With this we can also proc. Ball Lightning is not linked to anything. I've messed around with a lot of setups and really I ended up on this. You can use a Curse and Hit if you want. However, I personally found, found that it was not really necessary. The reason why I'm still using Ball Lightning to proc all my abilities is because it takes a while to go through mobs. Therefore, it continuously hits. So even if you cast once, you really have your proc up for a lot longer than just the 4 seconds of the initial hit of something like shield charge. 
Keep in mind, however, that Scourge Claw is not a necessary unique for this build. It does help out with clear speed, and it does increase the damage of the Wicker Man, giving them a lot more AoE. However, I have played without the Claw for just about the majority of this character. I would say just about until level 94. If you're looking for some ideas for a different weapon, I highly recommend you just get something with cast speed and attack speed, just so you can use your abilities a little bit faster. That's just about everything when it comes to the unique items for our build. The Covenant is the main focus, and like mentioned before, the Scourge Claw. If you can get it, get it. If you can't, not that big of a deal. The rest of our items are simply items that focus on capping out our resistances, hopefully elemental weakness capped. I believe it's 109 resistance currently in the game. And then just get a lot of life, maybe try to get some attack speed, uh, try to get strength, that increases your life too. A lot of people have been asking, how the hell do you have 9,000 life? I could have a lot more life. If you have the possibility of trading, you can definitely have a lot more life. There's no special magic trick to it, guys. All you have to do is just pick up a bunch of life notes in the skill tree, have some items with some life, get a little bit of strength in them, and you'll be totally fine. You can see the items that I had at the end of my level 100 push on the screen, and really, they're not exactly astonishing, especially the boots. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the links. Remember that you can mess around with those for your personal preference. This is just a setup that I ended up with. Keep in mind that I was racing at this time, therefore my setup might not be 100% optimal, but for the most part, for the little time that I had to figure out what exactly I'm going to play in the very end, I think this is what most of you will end up with. For our main setup in our chest piece, we use Summon Raging Spirits, Minion Speed, minion damage support, elemental damage with attack support, melee splash, and melee physical damage. Our sixth length is elemental damage with attack support. However, do keep in mind, if you have access to a level 3 or level 4 in power, in my opinion, it will be better. We are dealing more physical damage, to which mobs have a lot less mitigation. And also, your SRS will have more HP, therefore, they will last for longer, giving you more protection, but also allowing you to cast less of them. For our Wicker Man setup, we use Race Spectre, Elemental Focus, Increased Area of Effect, and Minion Damage Support. This is in a Bone Helmet. This was supposed to be a Baron build initially, however, GGG has changed the drop rates of Barons without really telling anybody, so I ended up with a Bone Helmet. It does increase the AoE damage of our Wicker Man, but I think optimally, if you can get a Baron, that would probably help you out a lot more with the current map boss HP. The increased area of effect is a little bit tricky of a choice. I've done a lot of experimentation with this. Ended up thinking that this is the correct choice. Some people like to use Conk effect here, but for me, this is what worked best for AoE clearing with high level minions. For our claw setup, we ended up using Immortal Call, Castman Damage Taken, and Increased Duration. Some people like to have the wolves linked with something. For me, I haven't really noticed any difference in the gameplay, however I linked them. So that's where my Immortal Call setup landed. Do keep in mind that the claw itself is 113 dex and 113 int. This will make it quite difficult to normally roll the 3 red on it. So please use the Verici trick by putting two red onto it and then crafting two sockets and then three sockets until you get the last red. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should probably Google the Verici trick. It will help you out a lot and save you a lot of currency when rolling your gear. Our shield is your typical summoner setup. Increased duration, vol haste, flesh offering, not much to say here. We want to keep those up 24 seven. Always have your flesh offering, always have your vol haste up. And something maybe to mention also, probably some people are wondering about Endless Hunger. This gives Soul Eater to your Spectres. I've done some experimentation with it, not too much. And for the most part, I did like the way the Wicker Man behaved with the gem itself. But do keep in mind when they have Soul Eater, they are stealing souls from you also. Therefore, you don't charge up your Volhaste nearly as much. It is a decision that you have to make. I ended up using 
bulk haste, maybe for you it's going to be a little bit different. In our gloves I ended up using a 3 link with one gem separate. The 3 link is generosity, decoy totem and hatred. Obviously the decoy totem doesn't do anything. Make sure that your hatred is linked with generosity at all times. Make sure to get quality on your aura gems. It will make a massive difference for your clear speed, especially early on. And the last link that is separate from this, and keep in mind, this has to be separate, otherwise it will link to generosity. Our last link is haste. If we link the generosity with the haste, we will be casting and moving around a lot slower, and it's just not good. Our minions will be slightly faster, but it's really not worth the trade at all because we're already doing enough damage and our minions are fast enough. In our boots, we have shield charge, fortify, faster attacks, and bolt lightning. Bolt lightning doesn't really do anything. Shield charge allows us to move around fast and gives us fortify so we can survive in those sketchy situations. Our last completely optional setup is the summon stone golem. This helps us out a lot with surviving on bosses alongside the decoy totem. The golem itself doesn't really die that often. That little bit of regeneration that it gives is also quite helpful. You don't necessarily have to do this. It is pretty difficult to cap your resistances even without the unset ring. But if you have the possibility, you should probably go for it. I'm quite happy with the way our flasks ended up. The most important one for me personally is the Experimenter's Quicksilver Flask of Warding. There is a new way Curse map mods work. In the past, if you had a Warding Flask, you would still be affected by the Curse map mod. However, now, if you have an active Warding Flask, this will prevent any curses from the map mod affecting you. Therefore, it is incredibly important that you get a Warding Flask and that it lasts as long as possible. The second flask I use is a Chemist Silver Flask of Grounding. Like in any of my other videos, I always recommend to have 23 reduced charges used or above so that you have two uses of this. And then standard shock removal, this is really up to you whether or not you want to use it. Shock is not nearly as dangerous, but it can still definitely kick your ass. For our super defensive flask, I use a Chemist Iron Skin Flask. This one doesn't have to be Chemist. I ended up being a little bit lucky. I ended up with an actually perfect flask, which is 25% reduced charges used and 100% armor during flask effect. I did end up with quite a bit of armor during this flask being active. I have 13,000 armor, which mitigates just about anything outside of boss hits. It gives you a tremendous amount of survivability and I highly recommend you use a flask like this over a basalt flask. The last two flasks are a little bit optional. I ended up with two life flasks, which is a little bit unusual. I do have 9,000 life, but two life flasks are still weird. So if you want to maybe use something like a basalt or a stip knight or a jade flask, that's completely fine. The ones that I ended up with are Seeding Divine Life Flask of Staunching. This is an instant bleed removal flask. Again, this is something that you probably might want to put on a utility flask, but it's up to you. And my other one is a Seeding Divine Life Flask of Heat so that we can remove those freezes. I don't really get frozen all that much, but it does happen every now and then. Therefore, instead of logging out or dealing with annoying boxes, you can just pop a flask and you're totally fine. That's the reason why I don't really have it on any of my utility flasks because, again, we don't really get frozen all that much. One of the tricky parts of the build is the thing that people always get incredibly confused about. How do your specters not die? There's a trick to this. Initially, what you want to do is you want to go to Ravage Square. The way I get my specters personally is I swap out my Volhaste and my Flesh Offering with Spell Echo and Desecrate. As soon as we have Desecrate, you can see that I'm spawning Wickerman on the ground. You have to select your Spectre, hold down A, which is the default key binding for showing corpses on the ground, summon two of these bad boys, and most people think you're good to go. You're not. These Spectres will only be level 64. Spectres downscale and upscale and maps. So what I mean by that is that if I were to go to a level 50 zone now, 
these specters would only be level 50. However, if I were to go to a level 70 zone, these specters would only be level 64. And for Wicker Men, this makes a massive difference. It is a huge difference in their survivability, and it is a even bigger difference in the amount of damage that they deal. So what I do, I use a promenade. Not every map you can do this trick in. The maps that I used was Shaped Racecourse and Shaped Promenade. I also know that Shaped Courtyard and Shape and the uh, Chimera Lair also has these guys, and that's where I would get my Spectres from usually, but you kind of have to mess around with this. What I mean by these Spectres cannot spawn in any map is that some maps simply cannot spawn Wicker Man. No matter how many times you try, you will simply not get them. Therefore, that's why we get the Wicker Man from the Ravage Square, because we can use a trick with Desecrate. So I go to the maps that can spawn Wicker Man, like mentioned before, in this case it's a Shape Promenade, and if I have the Wicker Men already summoned, they are able to appear in the map, whether or not they can be your enemy in this one. So, you can see there, I get one Wicker Man, and maybe I can even show you, there should be a pretty massive difference with these. Uh, Still sane, exile. Let me switch up my gems again. There should be a pretty massive difference. You can see one barely got hit, it's already dying, and it's also doesn't it doesn't seem to be doing much damage. Just about any hit will get him killed, while the other one doesn't have any issues surviving or dealing damage and killing everything just about instantly. So yeah, that's the trick. If your specters are dying, make sure that they are the appropriate level. If I were to go to a level 82 zone, these guys would stay level 81. But if I were to go to a level 70 zone, they would be at the max level, which would be 70. Obviously, once they downscale, they also upscale. So it's not like you can't go to lower zones now. You can. That's totally fine. Something very important about the Wicker Men is that you can fully control them. They're actually quite smart by themselves. However, if you control them, you can really take your clear speed to the next level. So if I were to point my cursor at this little bush and click my SRS, the Wicker Men will run over there. And even if your SRS doesn't travel there, you can see that they're guarding this area now. You can use this to target the nearby mobs with your SRS and at the same time pointing your Wicker Men to go to different spots and cleaning up mobs in the back if you're having problems with maybe something like a invulnerability totem. So maybe we're gonna get some guys here and you can see that I'm over here in the back, I don't have any SRS. And even if I'm off screening, I can force my Wicker Man to go over there and fight the mobs almost off screen. The SRS won't even reach there, however the Wicker Man will kill everything and with the, their tankiness, they won't really have a problem at all. Another question that a lot of people have is why don't you use zombies? Especially if you have Baron, it's like the Baron thing, right? Well, zombies really aren't that great, guys. Most of the time, they kind of get you killed by uh, allowing other mobs to AoE overlap onto your character. I really wouldn't recommend them. They're not particularly great tanks. They die rather frequently unless you really build around them. And honestly, with this character, you can't get enough links to min-max something like that. If you want to use zombies, you can go for it. However, most likely it will be detrimental to the build itself. Something that also came up as a question in the last video is, how the hell do you get that rampage? Well, I explained it, but I'll try to explain it again, hopefully this time properly. We use the exact same setup we used in the last video, which is Dancing Dervish. This gives us rampage completely for free. How do we get it for free? Well. If you have your main setup somewhere else, and like in our case, we have our custom damage taken here, vol haste, increased duration, we don't need these things to kill mobs. What you do is, if you see, I kill mobs normally, this will not give me rampage if it is in my offhand. And now, if I were to swap my weapon, and I am now using the Dancing Dervish, you can see I'm killing mobs, I'm killing mobs, as soon as I kill enough mobs and the timer comes up, 
this will spawn the weapon. Now what happens when this weapon spawns? I cannot use this weapon. What this means, I cannot weapon swap either. This goes away once the rampage bonus goes away, but if our weapons are disabled, even if we have the rampage, we can't really clear fast. So the tricky part, hi Rainbow Strides, is to use our Dancing Dervish, kill some mobs, or kill a single mob, however, not enable the rampage bonus. So you have to kill between 1 to 18 mobs. As soon as the rampage bonus enables itself, you will no longer have your weapons. So what I do is, I cast SRS, I kill a couple mobs, you can see. I swap back, and you can see I don't have the rampage yet, but as soon as I kill over those 15 mobs, the rampage bonus comes up, and this will stay for as long as we need it, and my weapons don't disappear at all. And you can use this in any map, and with just about any build. So be sure to utilize this strategy, because it helps out a lot with many characters, and it tremendously increases your clear speed completely for free. And that's about it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I had a ton of fun with this character. It definitely exceeded my expectations. I thought it's just going to be another SRSer. However, it turned out to be more of a wicker boy than anything else. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!